sneak peek at a premium bat rip. Hello everyone and welcome back to Hell Some Wargaming and welcome to Coffee Time. I have coffee. George is just giving me a fantastic mug. And I have a stroop waffle today. I have two because I'm greedy. Smash him. What coffee snack have you got today? Where's that stroop waffle? Amazing. I hope you're all doing well. Hope you're having a fantastic day and thank you very much for tuning to this video. Today we're going to be talking about old news. It's been like a week, but hopefully that should change soon. We've got some planned format changes in some of the way we do battle reports so I can do them quicker and then I can actually have some more relevant videos come out on time. But today we're going to be talking about the keywords, the core changes of keywords. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there was an article on Tuesday, I think it was, where Games Workshop started talking about a keyword that we've seen on the heavy intercessors who have Hellstorm bolters. So that means I need 60 of them. And we're going to talk about what this what this means. Essentially, we're going to talk about what, they, what they're on about, talk about it, and what, what armies it might affect, and kind of like what I think about it. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. If you don't like that, tough. That's what we're doing. So what we saw on the Heavy Intercessor data sheet was that they have a core keyword. And essentially, this is going to relate to units that make up the core of an army. For example, infantry will be part of the core of the army, as such, such as your troops. They've also mentioned that things like bikes and heavy, heavy elite units like Terminators. The examples they give is Terminators in Space Marines, Lich Guard, Bike Squads and Team Blades and some vehicles. And what essentially this means is that your characters that you have that essentially buff your army like Captains, Lieutenants, Chaplains for Space Marines and then in, for Necrons we have Overlords, Lords, Cryptex, etc. These these units will only have their they have a buff that inbuilt they have aura ability such as rerolling hits rerolling wounds and other stuff that you can have depending what type of character you've got their abilities might only affect core units and by that means essentially your captain can only inspire your uh, infantry to reroll hits where they might not affect a repulse or executioner for example in the example given by those uh, this is quite big. This is quite a big change and obviously a lot of people are agreeing it's a good change. I agree it's a good change. It's kind of annoying when you play Space Marines, but like this is a good change for the game. I think the only downside that we have is that some armies will have this change and some armies won't. Essentially, it's going to be a bit of a slow burn. I'm kind of hoping they don't do a mass FAQ when this core keyword comes out and kind of like readjust every single army at the same time because that's just going to get confusing. So I'm kind of hoping that they adjust codex by codex, but with that, it means that some codexes will have access to re-rolling for everything in their army, whereas some will only be able to re-roll for certain units. But this is not like a, a bizarre concept, for example. There are units already in the game that can only affect specific units, such as uh, you have the special Black Legion Hark and World Claimer who only affects Raptors, for example. He only His ability only works for those units, it doesn't work for everybody. And again, overall, I think this is going to be a good change to the game because you won't have like characters sat at the back babysitting big tanks to give them up the max buffs and you'll have them kind of working with the army as intended, which is only good for the game, in my opinion. But before I go on, do you think this is good for the game? I might be wrong. Do you think it has bigger implications? Let me know in the comments. What I want to talk about today is what units are going to be affected and how the game might look differently when everyone has this update. Because there's quite a lot of units, there's quite a lot of army styles that kind of rely on characters for their buffs that might not be able to do that anymore. So it's kind of like, how are they going to be affected? Then we can, we're going to have to start thinking about how we can go around it and how we can fix that. So obviously we talk about Space Marines. Essentially we can like lump most Space Marines and Chaos Space Marines together. There's kind of like one or two that we can kind of pick out. But obviously our core is kind of, we're going to basically like look at what who's going to be core, who's going to be not core in common armies and how it might change. So core, you obviously got troops, you got Terminators, you got bikes, which they've already mentioned, but it also says some vehicles. So I kind of have a hunch that some dreadnoughts, such as old dreadnoughts, redemptor dreadnoughts, maybe maybe rhinos and razorbacks might part make up part of the core army, but then obviously repulsors, contemptors, scorpius, whirlwinds might not have the core keyword, and that would make sense. So like your back artillery won't have the core keyword because that's not part of your core army, but your infantry will. So that could be quite interesting. A lot of the other space marines kind of line up the same way, but there is one that I want to pick out. You've got Death Guard. They have, obviously have a Warlord trait known as Arch Contaminator that like, allows units within seven to reroll wounds with plague weapons. I think this is like kind of like a prime example of what will form part of the core keyword changes. I think if Death Guard keep that ability in their new codex, which has been announced, if they keep that Warlord trait, I imagine this is something that will be reduced to core only. Whereas obviously the Poxmonger 
relic which gives him one to demon engines isn't going to be core only because there isn't going to be hardly any core demon engines. So that's quite interesting, I think. And I think that's going to have a really big impact. So what you're going to start seeing is, like, they kind of mentioned Repulsor Executioners, but competitively no one's running Repulsor Executioners anyway. It's kind of like the pickup game meta army where it's like, oh, your mate who's going to play Space Marines, he's got three Repulsors because he's a bit of a knobhead. <laughs> like me. <laughs> but, like, most competitive lists won't be running Repulsors. They're going to be running Scorpius and Contemptors, which are kind of like the big losers here. But obviously their rules are going to be changing because they're because they are forge world units we've already had a forge world book announced so we don't even know if they're going to be any good soon so there you go a couple of other, other armies to think about is eldar now they don't have much access to kind of re-rolls except for an autark which is kind of similar to a captain which is probably like a prime example to change one thing i did consider is maybe psychic powers might be limited so things like guide protect may be limited to only a, applying to core units again if they keep these psychic powers which we don't know this the entire the all of these examples i'm going to be giving is it is if they keep these abilities so i reckon protect and guide might be limited to core units only um so you can't put guide on for example maybe maybe dark reapers but maybe not uh, but also you can't put guide on your shiny spears but maybe i don't know because they're kind of like an elite an elite biker whereas maybe your wind riders can get guide but maybe not your shiny spears for example so that could be quite interesting if they do get limited to core Drakari, you kind of have an obvious one. You kind of have Archons, which kind of have reroll ones to hit. With Writ of the Living Muse Relic, you have reroll ones to wound as well. What you tend to see is an Archon and three Ravagers kind of sat at the back of the board. Or Reapers now, which is again the Forge World version. I imagine Archons will stay the same and be able to only affect Cabalite Warriors, essentially. Uh, which is going to be really big. Because you just you just won't see three Ravagers at the back of the board anymore. But it, what, what it does mean is, because Ravagers are so fast, then you kind of might see them played more aggressively maybe or maybe split up to kind of help play the mission because you have in a drakari army especially a cabalite drakari army you kind of have venoms which play the mission you have the ravages which are your firepower maybe because ravages are so fast they can also start playing the mission so drakari is going to turn into a super mobile army but the firepower is not quite as good <laughs> they're already super mobile but now they're going to be even more mobile also with drakari you've obviously got you've got the covens so the the pain engines and stuff like that so you've got a homunculus which gives plus one toughness to all units within six so obviously this is run with talos are talos going to form part of the core army maybe maybe not because like if some vehicles get the the keyword then obviously maybe some monsters are going to get the keyword for core they do kind of make up the core of a drakari army if you're running coven so maybe they will keep it but if they didn't then talos are going to be stuck at toughness six along with chronos which can be a really big a really big issue for drakari having like essentially army wide toughness six now rather than toughness seven and so it could be quite interesting if they do get it but then you've got grotesques which i imagine will form part of the core army and obviously rax will so they'll be able to retain being able toughness five i don't know it's an interesting one for that one especially necrons uh they're going to get into codex they're going to be the first ones along with space marines to get those core keywords and again what we've already mentioned lich guard and stuff are going to get it but maybe canoptech wraiths and other canoptech units won't get it because obviously you've got the canoptech reanimator which can choose a unit to reanimate with plus one we don't know how reanimation is going to change properly yet but maybe they can only choose a core unit so they can only choose warriors and immortals etc they can't choose like canoptech wraiths with their reanimation because uh, you can use a stratagem to make them reanimate as well maybe they won't get it so you can't give them any buffs for reanimation it's just straight dice rolls if we even know how it's gonna work yet they might they're like that they might not even be able to reanimate the new but we don't know you got custodies you got trajan valoris obviously re-rolling hit rolls have ones and wound rolls of ones this probably is no longer going to affect bikes i imagine just because the amount of shots they do get but it might do but especially they won't affect Caladius, Caladius grav tanks with being like a kind of like a backline shooting unit so they're probably not going to be part of the core Maybe some Dreadnoughts, maybe the Galatas and the, the Achilles might be core, but the Telamon might not be. Again, it's kind of all, it's all a guessing game, but it's quite interesting to kind of like think about each army and how it affects it. Admech, you've got a big one. Are Castell and the Robots going to be core? Hopefully not. So then Call can't give them all of the rerolls ever, so thank God. And then another one I thought about was Tyranids, because you've got the Swarm Lord with his Hive Commander ability, so he can make a unit move as if it was movement phase instead of shooting. Then you've kind of got like Gene Stealers kind of moving twice as usual, but then you can't make himself move twice. You can't make Hive Tyrants move twice, example. I think the biggest losers overall in this is Aircraft, because they're never going to be able to get a reroll hit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is fair enough because they shouldn't but i know i've kind of like glossed over all the armies quite quickly but it is quite it is quite a big change to the game and it is going to affect every single army eventually hopefully eventually hopefully not all on day one 
because I'm fed up with FAQs. But it's very interesting to kind of start considering some of the abilities that we see all the time and then how they might not be a thing very soon. Again, I kind of said in another video that I said like no stat line is safe. No unit is safe in the game anymore. Nothing. We can kind of expect that every single unit is going to receive a change maybe. Some might not, but like with, with what we've seen with the Space Marine Codex, with all, the, all of the leaks so far from product data sheets from the instruction manual is that no unit is going to be staying the same by the looks of it, or a lot of the units are going to be changing and some of them won't, which is quite interesting. But it's also, I think it's also kind of a negative at the same time because it's great that it, the game keeps changing and keeps it fresh and exciting. But also, as someone who, ha who lives and breathes Warhammer, it is quite a lot to take in all the time. And I am starting to feel a bit like, well, I'm playing a game, but also there's all this other stuff that's going to happen, which is massive change. And it's kind of like, I'm feeling a little bit burnt out with the, the amount of change, the stuff that's changing. I kind of, like the, the, the prime time of 8th edition for me was after the Space Marine Codex came out and Psychic Awakening started coming out. Because it was quite spread out and every army received a little bit of a change, but not a huge change. So what I, I consider the game then being quite stable. Again, Space Marines are too, too powerful, obviously. But I, I saw the game is quite stable. So it was kind of like I could go up to a match and I kind of knew what everything did. Because maybe there was a new Psychic Awakening, but there wasn't too much to learn. And the game was easy to understand and easy to follow, in my opinion. As someone who'd been playing from the start of 8th edition. And we'd seen such humongous changes through 8th edition. But then it kind of, after the first year... Year, it kind of slowed down whereas now we're seeing the same thing happen with the ninth edition is that all the codexes work but all the codexes are going to be updated but we don't know how quickly they're going to be updated we've already see, already seen like five books announced already up until the end of the year but it's quite kind of daunting as a player to be like that's a lot of rules changes i've got to understand and i'm still playing with a book that's like like for example these two armies they're still playing with books that are like two and a half years old now space marines are getting a third book in the in the past four years or three years or whatever again an issue but but like if you're at the end of the queue in terms of codex releases you're gonna be playing a book that's like three years old compared to someone who's had one for two months and and then you're gonna have like old codexes playing each other that are kind of playing the wrong game because everyone's playing ninth edition you're playing eight and a bit because you haven't been updated yet so i don't know i'm finding it a little bit a little bit daunting because there's just so much happening also not happening at the same time again that's probably due to the pandemic that we're in because of the virus but there's no events happening there's loads of rules changes coming out sometime but i just don't know when and um it's a little bit a little bit overwhelming but i don't know what do you guys think let me know in the comments are you excited for the core change what army do you play which how do you think that's going to affect it massively are you feeling a little bit burnt out with how much is happening i am i want to keep going though <laughs> i have to I don't know. There's a little bit of a moan, a little bit of a ramble. Oh, there's my thoughts for this week. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I want to thank you all for tuning in today. If you liked the video and you are new, please click like. If you really enjoyed it, you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe if you can. We do uh, coffee time every single Sunday and we have battle reports come out on Wednesday for our small board gang members. You can become join small board gang by clicking join down below. And become tier 3 to get an extra video every single Wednesday. We put out battle reports or a fresh video on Friday as well. We also stream on Mondays, so no excuse. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for listening to my rambles. I love you all and hopefully we'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye now. Hello small board gang. A lot of you have been asking about this shit. And a lot of you have already received this shirt. Look how awesome everybody looks in this shirt. I look pretty awesome in this shirt. Do you look awesome in this shirt? It's a cool shirt, right? It's like literally finest of quality, the highest of quality, the best quality. The best quality you'll ever see in this shirt for my YouTubers. Well, do you want this shirt? No! You missed out. Look up. I said to you it was limited edition. So why do you keep messaging me asking for this damn shirt? Limited edition. You can't buy this shirt anymore. As as cool as it is, you cannot buy it. However, one small opportunity for you. You fools. You missed out on this shirt. But don't miss out again. We have a brand new shirt for you. It's coming to you right now. Here, have a look at this. Look, let's take this shirt. There we go. How cool is this shirt? Right? It's like it's like it's like the small board gang one. But, but with the new design superimposed on it, you get it in multiple colours, 
multiple shirt styles maybe, we'll find out. But if you like the look of this shirt, it is only available this month and let me explain how it works. During the month of September, you can order this shirt. If you order it via our website and you are a premium subscriber, you'll also get a discount. At the end of the month, we'll collect those orders, put those orders forward. You should receive your shirt during the month of October, if not, at the very worst, early November. We do this so we don't have to hold loads of stock of the same shirt and then never sell them, which means we never make shirts again. But we're super, super happy with this digital design of this shirt that has been drawn by John Scrivens. So order yours today, there's a link in the description. It goes to our website. You can order it today, it's all PayPal approved and you can look as good as I will, but without having to superimpose it later in post. So buy your shirt today at healthstormwargaming.co.uk slash shop and join the firstborn gym and train your way to two wounds. Ah. Buy a shirt today.